Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another amazing episode of the Great Debaters Contest. I'm your host Chris Buru. And I'm Esperanza Kapanga. Today we shall be talking matters food and climate. With the motion of the day being, climate change is the greatest cause of famine in Africa. Opposing this motion we have the PESA Foundation Academy. Opposing the motion we have Alliance Girls Arts. Both of whom are actually formidable competitors in the Kiambu region. So, Proposal number one, you have three minutes to make a statement. I'm Desi Chepkuri from Mpesa Foundation Academy, proposing the motion that climate change is indeed the leading cause of farming in, in Africa. Starting with the definition of terms, climate change, a change in global or regional climate patterns, in particular, a change apparent from the mid to the late 20th century onwards, farming, especially as extreme scarcity of food. Yes, indeed, climate is the leading cause of farming in Kenya. Climate change is causing global warming in our, in our, in our continent, Africa. Climate change has, has caused increased global warming that has altered the normal seasons of the year. Research has revealed that the Sub-Saharan and the Saharan countries have experienced irregular and short rainfall seasons, thus increasing temperatures throughout the year. When temperatures increase throughout the year, the farmers won't get the rainfall that they require to, pr to produce more agricultural products. What does that lead to? It leads to farming because there will be extreme scarcity of food due to the lack of rainfalls. Again, I come from Taitataveta County, and in 7th April 2017, there was an invasion of army worms in that county. What do you think we faced? Right now, my county is at a verge of experiencing farming. Why? Because the, the climate change has caused drought in that county. The, the drought has drought in, encourages army worms to invade a place, and because of army worms invaded Taitataveta and destroyed the, the plants that the farmers had created, right now, Taitataveta is at a verge of experiencing farming. That has been caused by climate change. According to a research done by UNEP, by 2020, 75 to 250 million people are being exposed to, ex to experience water stress. This will lead to farming because there will be no water for the farmers to cultivate. There will be no water for anything that agricultural to take place. This will, lack, will lead to lack of food. And that what will it lead to? Farming. According to Climate Analytics Organization, the research done by Intergovernmental Panel, Panel on Climate Change has shown that 27 to 32 percent losses in agricultural and food sector are as a result of climate change. That is 32 percent people. I know that there are some other there are, there are some other factors that have also led to climate change, but 32 percent it's almost a half. If you divide the rest of the 68 percent that is remaining, it will be like 2 percent, 3 percent, 15 percent. Those are so less. But climate change is the leading cause of farming. So 32% of, of the countries in Africa will experience farming. Don't you think that a lot of people are going to die during that period? We love our country and we, love, we want them to not to be affected by climate change. So there are some things that you can do to prevent it. According to a research done by Oxfam.com, nearly 11 million people in Somalia, Ethiopia, and our very beloved country, Kenya, face terrifying food shortages. People, those are a lot of people we are losing to climate change. So let's not ignore the fact that it is actually climate change that is causing this farming in Africa. And as I end, one of the SDGs goal, number two, is no hunger. And if you ignore the fact that climate change is really the thing that is causing farming in Africa, then we are at a risk of not we are at a risk of not reaching the goal number two. Thank you. First suppose you have three minutes to present your case. Kerubo Arisi from Alliance Girls High School, opposing the motion. Climate change is not necessarily the main cause of farming. There are many other causes. Many, many countries in Africa take, for example, let's look at South Sudan, Somalia, and even Northeast Nigeria. These countries have been recently ravaged by famine. Why? It is due to internal conflicts and the general unrest in those countries. Now, do you expect me to act my back in my farm and tend to my crops when my life is at stake, when I'm supposed to save my skin, surely no. 
I can't. So, farms burnt down, granaries reduced to ashes. From there, we expect nothing. We expect nothing but wild, widespread malnutrition, starvation, and even death. Families cannot go back to their homes because they know between them and food stands a gun. Looking at it, moreover, we can see even the militias, they take this advantage, they take this to their own advantage and loot food. Food aid agencies cannot even access the worst chicken areas to deliver food so long as there is war. Famine will definitely be experienced. Because tell me, if there is war and I am running, I am running away from my farm, I can't concentrate on farming, I, I can't give it the best I am supposed to give it and there will be low food production, and thus, famine. Second proposal, you have three minutes to file a rejoinder. I like the man who is proud of their nation, their continent, and I'll stand by this man when he stands right, and when he's right, and I'll part with him when they decide on the wrong path. My name is Frank Abdi from Mpesa Academy, strongly proposing the motion before us. Ladies and gentlemen, the motion before us doesn't require us to think outside the box, but it's better for us to think within the box in relation to the future and what might cause the result inside the box. I pardon. The motion before us does not require us to think outside the box, but to think beyond the box in total reflection of what the box hold. The motion before us is famine. I know many, research, many researches have been done about other factors affecting famine. But I want to let, bring to your attention that a man doesn't cut the main route affecting his house or that is extending to his house, but he will be proud when he cuts the whole tree so that the tree does not grow at the roots again. One, let us base, basically think of the researches done within our continent and within our nation. Research done by the Global Citizen, July 17, 2017, written by Tez Sogan, states that three Eastern countries that is Kenya, Somalia, and Ethiopia are likely to fall into famine by 2018 due to below average rainfall. Second research done by Global Post on April 14, 2017 states that as drought conditions worsen, famine looms over Kenya. The third research done by International Research Institute for Climate and Security uh, categorized that climate change is a prime factor for, prime, uh, for famine in most countries in Africa. Lastly, the research done by BBC News on 11th November 2012 states that the most countries in Africa are affected due to climatic change. Young, adult, and gentlemen, researches are done but let's think of who are doing these researches and how are they affecting Africans. Most of these research are done by European countries and all of us are aware that these European countries, they exploited Africa and they are the main cause of the, the climatic change in Africa. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, if we deploy the antagonist, or protagonist, let's expect the result to be antagonist or the protagonist in this matter. And therefore, when we give ear to the researches done by the European countries that a matter like corruption, which comes the minor factor of famine in Africa, a priority that is the cause, then we are going the wrong direction. And therefore, I say that famine, the main cause for famine in Africa is is climatic change. Thank you. Second opposer, you have three minutes to file a rejoinder. 
One of the big challenges to responding to a famine is resource. There's food out there, true. But then, is there the will and is there the money? That is something said by Kate McMahon from Mercy Corps Food Security Advisor. Lesham Tongoe Alliance Girls High School strongly opposing this motion that climate change is the leading factor to famine. I would like to ask that if there is climate change in a country, as much as you have quoted countries such as Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia, very true. But if these countries, just as Kat McHatton has said, if they had the will and the money, wouldn't they have been able to rebuttal that? Wouldn't they? According to the SDG from the United Nations, number one, about poverty, it states that 80% of sub-Saharan households earn less than $2 a day. And lack, because of suffering poverty for a long time, for several decades, lack of strong government and community support systems have not been able to support them even in their earning of less than $2 per day. I mean, if I am poor today, as much as I would like to eat, as much as I can see that it is raining, if I am poor, what can I do? As much as we would want to say that climatic change is the main cause, yes, that is what you would like to say. But then, that is one of the things that can be controlled when we come to climatic change. For example, if today we had the money, if today I had the will to do it, that I want to build a greenhouse, I want to build greenhouses around the area, that takes will, that takes money. And that is just a microclimate in its own self. That is just having an area in its own self where I know I can acquire food. But then because I am earning less than $2 a day, I am saying I cannot be able. I cannot. And to declare famine, these are some very key facts. At least 20% of households in a given area should have extreme food shortages. More than 30% of the children should suffer from acute malnutrition and hunger causes two deaths among 10,000 people a day. So if I know that somewhere out there that I do not have the money to even venture into the private sector, I do not even have the money to even access the food that is being brought in by the Europeans that you quite stated, then how will I be able to save myself? How will I? Currently, there is a statement by the Food and Agricultural Organization that is criticizing what the South African government has done. They have raised up the money for the food agencies to come and supply food from $100 to $10,000. Kenyans, Africans, tell me, how will we be able to do this? How can I not suffer in famine if I cannot afford the $10,000? How can I? And this is not only in South Sudan. This affects countries in Africa. Let us think about this. As much as climate change may be the leading cause, I want to say that they, we can control it, but other factors out there, no, we cannot. Thank you. For the question session, the proposers have been asked what is their take considering that Middle Eastern countries experience irregular climate yet are still able to feed their citizens compared to a country like Kenya that has regular climate patterns but still has citizens that suffer from famine. The opposers have been asked where does the will and the money come from considering that agriculture is a major sector in the country. Third proposer, you have three minutes. SDG number two no hunger but what causes hunger climatic change is the main effect of hunger miracle israel is not a country in africa we are talking about africa but and mind you that israel was always a drought country from the beginning the ancient times but africa was had arable land and the european countries due to global 
due to industrialization have caused global warming, which is affecting us. Let me tell you that money is something momentally. I might be having money in the pocket, but money cannot bring rainfall. And that is what most African lands depend on. In 1978, 1997, 1998, El Nino in Kenya, I happened to be a resident of Moranga County. And in fact, it encountered losses. It's so devastating. In 2016, the long rains that we had, my neighbor was washed away. Everything, including the food, they had to begin from zero. It's so unfortunate. It's a, it's a cause of famine. According to bogenproject.org, climate change leads to declining population in wildlife sector and 15% of the world's population is dependent on wildlife. Poor people, and I'm not encouraging poaching, depend on meat from the, tour, from the wildlife. But when we don't have enough wildlife, it means they're going to go hungry. And what causes deaths? Drought, famine, famine. Production also becomes less predictable as many farmers depend on rainfall for crops. Hence, they might miss out on important season. Might, they might start planting much later and the rains won't be consistent. I want to say that climate change triggers conflicts. Conflict is just as a result of climate change. According to theconversation.com, the Rwandan genocide that happened in 1994 broke out as a result of environmental problems. The climatic change made the Hutus and the Tutsi to fight for pasture land, to raid. And as the conflicts occur, it means that they are going to lose food. They are going to have these conflicts. But as a result, people are going to go hungry. The greater risk is to those, is the, is to the less sustainable people, like women in our society. We also have traditional agriculture that is dying out. Livestock are dying in Trukana. People are going, they are emaciating because of lack of, 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 of lack of rainfall. Guys, please, my fellow audience, support me and concur with me that drought is the main cause and climate. Thank you so much. Haruposa, you have three minutes to respond to the question. My name is Donna Nyaboke of Alliance Girls High School, strongly opposing the motion that climate change is the leading cause of famine in Africa. To answer Joseph, I believe's question, where does the will and the money come from considering that most of Africa's money comes from agriculture? Quite right, which is why we say that poverty is one of the leading causes of famine. Yes, money cannot bring rain, but money can enable us to dig boreholes and to begin glass greenhouses where we'll be able to contain the climate and be able to grow crops which will, will be enough for us to eat. Poor infrastructure. Most of the times the problem isn't production of food, the problem is how the food will reach the people. Over the years, Kenya has had several cases of aflatoxin poisoning. Why? Because of poor storage of food. Maize has been known to be put in damp places whereby people are not able, are unable to, are able to get to eat poisoned food. Several people have died as a result of this. Why? The government does not input enough money in the agricultural sector. We have diversified to things like real estate where we think more money will be earned. Think of South Sudan, where 60% of the land is inaccessible. Why? Poor roads. If famine was to be alleviated, if food aid programs wanted to help, they couldn't be able to reach. Why? Because it's inaccessible. You can't just go around flying helicopters, dropping food on people. It doesn't work like that. There's a system. Let's look at South Sudan, the second most corrupt country in the world according to Transparency International. Corruption in South Sudan isn't just an anomaly within the system, it's the system itself. And that's why during war, 
the crimes perpetuated against the people, the looting and the murder and the destruction of food isn't punished. Why? What is the government doing about punishing these people who, who destroy what is so sacred, who destroy the one thing that gives us life, food? Come to think of it, governments are not investing in agriculture enough. We know that people are poor. Farmers are dependent on the government because they cannot afford the private sector. We may be able to increase our yields if we use um, certified seeds, if we use fertilizer, if we have enough equipment to farm and increase our yields. But we are poor. Where does the taxpayer's money go? Think of it. We also have people who suffer during the transportation of food. Transportation of food from the farmers to the storage areas. Somewhere along the line, something goes wrong. What? What goes wrong? Think of it. Where does the money go? We have the will, but we have no money. The, ta the government collects money. Where does it go? The proposition, you have one minute to wrap up your case. When I lean forth and back, shake my head, I still see no points in their research. Why? If there's good climate, if there's adequate rain, that means my farm can produce and my neighbors can produce. Simply means I can produce maize, my neighbor can produce vegetables. Where is famine coming in, in that scenario? In contrary, our opposer says that we need generators to do irrigation, there's corruption. How is corruption coming in in those two scenarios? If I can produce maize, my neighbor can produce vegetables. See, I, I think there's no need for us to talk of something like FEMA in that case. Another thing, how there, there are generators that need water to run. If there's no water, how will this generator function? What will I use to irrigate my farm? Uh, because irrigation deals with water. How can I irrigate land and there's no water? How is corruption, water, good, I don't know, drought-resistant crops coming in? How can you, even drought-resistant crops need some water? You people, let's think beyond what we can see. Thank you. Proposition, you have one minute to wrap up your case. I would quite want to say what he said last. Guys, let us think beyond what we see. That is the last thing he said, right? What we are seeing right now is climate change. And for us, we are thinking beyond what we are seeing. We are thinking of how the people who are facing in conflict, currently Baringo County, South Sudan, Somalia, I mean, they cannot grow, they might have the rain. But then, just as you said, they left, the Hutus and the Tutsis left. They did not, have, they did not grow. They would have starved because of that. So honestly speaking, as much as Climate change is a cause. I do not, it is okay. But the motion is, it is the leading cause of famine. And that is one thing that we oppose. We oppose that is not the leading cause. We have other things that cause. And remember, Africa is palminated with problems from every side. War, bad governance, government policies, not only climate changes, not only that. And that is not the leading cause. We have very many things that come and contribute to us starving each and every day. Thank you. So this was really tough because both teams really did your research. It was a good job. But at the end of the day, the inevitable must happen. So let me start with um, Mpesa, Daisy. A good start, you defined your terms. You also quoted your sources when giving references. And uh, you made reference to the SDGs, which was a plus for you. Frank, I also like that you backed your argument with some facts. Um, though I believe you can do better than this with more practice. Joyce, you are really passionate. 
I like that your feelings resonated with the audience. That was good. The examples you gave very, very, uh, very relevant. Let me go to Alliance Girls. Valeria, a good speaker. Um, you didn't really quite utilize the three minutes that were uh, provided. Leshamta, I liked your rebuttal. I also like that you are very confident, you are very passionate in what you did. Dana, very confident also, though we didn't really quite see so much of uh, the body movement, but live with time, you can do even better than this. All the best to both teams. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of every impasse at the Great Debaters Contest, one team has to win, the other team has to learn. With a narrow margin of 0.7% indifference, one school has 71.1%, the other school has 71.8%. And the winning school is Alliance Girls High School. Congratulations to both teams, to Mpesa Academy. The battle may be lost, but the war is not yet over. For those watching us at home and various parts of the country, Remember to keep the conversation going on sustainable development goals. I'm your host till next time, Chris Buru. And I'm Esperanza Kapanga. <laughs>